Hello, hello. I'm excited to be with you for this special live stream where I am going to be answering your questions. That's right, this is a special Ask Me Anything video training for you. So my goal and my intention with this live stream is that uh, whether you are watching this live or on the replay, um, I'm able to be helpful to you with exactly what's going on for you and your business and your life right now. Because I know that everybody's in a different spot in business. So whether you're looking for your first client or you're looking to make your first $100 or your first $1,000 or your first $10,000 um, month or hit six figures, like all of those milestones are um, things that I have accomplished. and. I wanna help you to do the same. So if we haven't met, my name is Christine McAllister. Of course, I'm the founder of Life With Passion, and I help women to replace their incomes and quit and stay out of their jobs using simple strategies and self-belief. So I want you to drop your questions and tell me what is going on for you and your business right now. Tell me where you love some clarity. Tell me where you're struggling and you'd love to have a next step. Let's use this time to move you forward and get you clear, get you motivated, help you know you're not alone, and get you more confident so that you go out there and get some more business. And say hi if you're watching, please. Um, say hi so that I can say hi to you as well. I see a bunch of you on. So hi, Mallory. Mallory says congrats on your book. Thank you so much, Mallory. Yes, I just sent off the first half of it to the editor today. We are refining one more time the second half of it before we send that to her as well, but it is very, very close to having my editor's hands and eyes on the whole thing. It's so exciting. I'm expecting it to be out this spring. Uh, of course, I'll keep you all posted on the launch date and how you can be involved um, as we get closer. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Melissa. Awesome. So while I'm waiting for you all to type your questions, um, I want to remind you of something because I think there's something that a lot of us do as high achievers um, when, when we're getting, uh, you know, we're building our businesses. When we're building our businesses, um, we often will tell ourselves, oh my gosh, like I'm just, I'm so far behind or like I'm starting from nothing, I'm starting from scratch, like I have so far to go, you know, I just don't know enough and like give me some hearts if you have ever felt that way or you're feeling that way right now, let me know if I'm talking about something that is applicable to you. But one thing that I want to remind you of is that you are not starting from scratch. Literally, you are not starting from scratch. Even if you've not even gotten your first customer yet. Even if you know, you're not making any money or very little money. You're not starting from scratch. Here's why. You've had a job before. You've had people pay you for your skills and your expertise before, right? You've gotten education before. You've shown up for things before. You are already learning and growing and doing and building your business, right? Um, I know that sometimes with my clients, there's this whole idea of a mindset of like, oh, but it feels so weird to get paid like directly for my services as opposed to um, indirectly when sort of like this magical paycheck just appeared every month, right? Like whatever, if it was a good month in business or a good month at the job or a bad month at the job. But I want you to kind of flip that a little bit as well and say, hey, you know what, actually like, the person who hired me did have to advocate to HR that like I was worth a paycheck and you know, um, maybe I had to fill out time cards saying that I'd worked and that I'd like directly earn this money. Whatever the case, like it's kind of time to drop that story of like, it's weird, it's weird to charge for what I do. I should just be able to give it away for free. No, you know why? Because you don't get to live then. If you can't charge, <laughs> for your services, you don't get to keep doing what you're doing, right? Of course, like if you love to volunteer and you love to give and you love to be of service, awesome, amazing, and 
let's get you charging so that you can quit your job so that you can help more people so that you can give more money away so that you can do more things that not only benefit others, but benefit you as well. I think, um, that's a really important part of, of, um, the money mindset stuff and the money story that we tell ourselves, um, that holds us back. And so like, that's my kind of tough love challenge to you today. And then I'm going to dive into the questions is to you're further along than you think. And I would love to challenge you to drop the story of like, it feels weird to get paid directly. It feels weird to ask someone for money. Like if you look around at all the places where we directly hand people money in exchange for things, the grocery store comes to mind, right? It wouldn't like get up to the counter and be like, would you just give me all this for free? Because like, I just, you know, I'm sure it feels weird to you to like take my money in exchange for these um, salad greens that I want, right? No. So like it could be the same thing for you with your business. Time to drop the story of like feeling bad about charging and know that it's good for them and for you if you're charging. And if you wonder why it's good for them, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to uh, answer that question. So Jackie says, I, I just can't seem to keep a stream of customers coming my way. So Jackie, like I would, I would ask, um, how often are you asking for customers? How often are you marketing to them? What's your main strategy for doing that, right? Or are you just like, oh, well, I'll do it when it comes to me, but um, I don't really have a strategy. If you don't have a strategy and you're not consistently showing up to market yourself and ask for the sale in a way that feels good for you, that's where I would start. Because people have to know and have an opportunity presented to them. Oh, I think the number I've heard a couple times is seven times before they, it even registers like in their memory. You know, people are busy, they're running a million miles a minute, right? Like they are got a lot of things coming at them, all kinds of different uh, opportunities, right? So like, I'll give you an example from my business. I know sometimes it's easier to um, hear it like uh, an example from someone else than for yourself because we're so close to our own stuff. Like um, I'm booked out, right, with, with, um, with a waiting list of people waiting to start um, working with me. I have, at this point, I have just one, one spot opening in February. Um, uh, I had two, but one's already taken. So like, um, but, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop talking about it now that I'm booked out, right? It doesn't mean I'm going to stop talking about the fact that I have opportunities because I, like, I don't want to get you know, 90 days down the road and be like, oh crap, I haven't marketed myself because I was totally booked out and now I don't have any leads. Not that that would happen, but if I stop talking about it, it might, right? People need to know, oh, if I want to work with Christine, like I need to go ahead and reach out to her. She has one spot in February. If you want to sell, um, if you want to have one customer a week, like you need to start talking about that. I only have so many spots. Like you know, what I do is really time intensive. What I do is at a really high level. Like you need to plan ahead if you're thinking about having something made for Valentine's Day. It's too late or whatever the thing is, right? Like you have to, you have to keep showing up for the business. You have to keep showing up for yourself. You got to keep offering what you've got to offer so that the right people will come to you at the right time. Okay. Um, I mean, if you have questions about that, Jackie. Sherry says, hi, Christine. I have a strange question. I have a women-only Facebook group. I've had a couple of men request... Um, to be added, I deny them access, of course, but should I be doing something else, sending them a message? Um, Sherry, if you don't want to work with men, you don't need to do anything about that. I, um, I, I mean, I get men requesting all the time, whatever. Actually, one snuck in the other day because their first name was Lee, L-E-I-G-H, <laughs> and Julie and I missed it. Um, but I was like, that's an odd profile picture. And I kicked him out right away. I was like, it's a profile picture of a dude. That's unusual. Like, what's up? And it was a guy. So, it, I mean, whatever. But uh, no, if you don't want to work with men and um, your Facebook group is women only, there's nothing you need to do there. Yeah, it's fine. Um, Mallory said, I've added three new clients this month. I had to close doors again because I'm trying to get my assistants caught up, adding more work for one of my clients, added another assistant. Wow, Mallory. Yes. Congratulations. Um, what I'm struggling with right now is learning how to streamline delegating. I'm thinking of starting a VA training program, but I'm afraid that I'm doing too much right now. So if you're afraid of you're, that you're doing too much already, Mallory, why would you start something else? I think you got to be in a place where you have the space. You allow yourself to have the space to 
create because that's going to be intense and then you've got to market it and then you've got to sell it and that's all time that you're not directly billing to your clients so i'll give you an example um from my um from my life um so this book right okay you guys know i've been working on this since december 2016 and um I went, I, I had my mom here last week, just like hanging out, having grandma time with Fee all week long. So that all day, every day, I literally had one call with a client last week and one, um, one call with a client last week and one call with my own coach last week. And that was it. Everything I did last Monday through Friday was work on the book every day down here at my little desk and all over my other room. I mean, the papers, it's out of control. You can see, they're everywhere. Then, Friday afternoon, I went away for the weekend for 48 hours, right? All by myself, we're in this beautiful apartment. All I did, all day, until my eyes were crossing and I needed to, you know, watch some silly Netflix shows at six o'clock at night, was, was work on the book. That's it. I caught myself by Monday saying, Oh gosh, you know, like I haven't been, I haven't been planning this, this whole new thing. Um, I haven't, I haven't planned a new webinar. I'm not like creating a challenge. I'm not like sending out 50 million newsletters. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Like I caught myself in this old story of like, I'm not working hard enough. I'm not working on my business. I'm not creating stuff for my business. And then pretty quickly I was like, hello, Christine, you just took a whole week to like, Dedicate to the biggest project you have going on in your business right now. Literally, the biggest project that's going to take your business to the next level, that's going to be passive income, that's going to lead into all these other new things that you'll create, that's going to do this, that's going to do that, it's going to do this, right? But I think there's this way that we tell ourselves, oh, I need to be doing something else. But like for you, Mallory, I'm booked out. You're booked out. And I, so when I got booked out, then I said, okay, well, instead of finding ways for myself to like, create some new course real quick or something. I'm going to finish this one big project I started. And so maybe your project is like, um, maybe your project is figuring out how to streamline delegating first so that you can find yourself with a whole week with nothing to do, but create that VA training program. And then you find yourself with a whole week, but nothing to do, but figure out how the heck you're going to market it and the price point and how many people you want in it or like what kind of support you need to have in place to get out there and get visible and market it consistently so that you enroll people and blah, 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 right? So that it's worthwhile. But I think you have to be real careful about splitting your focus. And so that's why I share that book example. And that's why, um, like that, that, those would be my thoughts for you. Hi, Melissa. Um, and obviously Mallory B, because we've worked together, um, I feel like I have like a little bit of insight, you know, for you that I'm, that I'm happy to share. So, um, Sherry says, yay. Hi, Jennifer. Um, I'm glad that that feels, that, that feels true. Um, and congratulations, Mallory. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. It's so well-deserved way to go. I love it. Um, Melissa says, are there any new exciting trends that will help new business owners in 2018? Ooh, I love this question. Um, I think the biggest trend that I see coming up over and over and over in calls, um, whether you've gotten your first client or you haven't, is to like focus down on what's working. Focus down on what's working. Now, the reason I think that this is so important, just sit up here a little bit. The reason I think this is so important is because of the like extreme, like shiny object syndrome I see like so much of the time. Should I be doing this? Should I be doing this? I feel like I need to create this. I got to create this program and that program. And I have to have this stream of income and that stream of income when we have zero streams of income or we don't have one consistent stream of income that feels really easy to us. If I don't have one thing rocking and rolling in my business really well, I really don't have business throwing a bunch of other stuff against the wall in the hopes that something will work. That is not the recipe for a successful business. That is a recipe for feeling overwhelmed and stressed and wondering what you're doing wrong. So if you're like, well, how do I focus down on what's working? Because I have a never, 
<laughs> because I have never um, had a client because I feel like nothing has worked yet because I'm so brand new, let's say, then I would say, well, what are your strengths in other areas, right? Like, like I was saying at the beginning of this, um, you're not starting from scratch. You already have some strengths. You already have some things you're really good at. So instead of going, well, now because I'm a business owner, that means I have to be good at this thing and I have to force it and it's really hard. No, I would say like the biggest thing I would like to see, like if I could wave a magic wand and, and help everyone with one you know big thing this year, it would be um, for you to really focus on what's working, what's already working in your business. What's easy for you? What's easy for you? And let's look at expanding that out. If nothing is easy, it's time to look at why. Could be a mindset issue, right? Um, so this is something that, like, I had an intensive um, last month, and the um, at the end of it, the the woman who's who's amazing and already has you know clients and customers, she said, you know, one of my biggest takeaways is like focus on what's working because as a business owner, I had never stopped to look at my business myself, right? And so we really did, which we don't a lot of the time when we're business owners. So what we did was we really did a deep dive. What's working? Where have clients come from? Where, where have customers come from? Like, go do that exercise for yourself. If you want my help to do it, you know, let's talk about an intensive. But like, find a way to focus on what's working. Oh, I'm going to slow shut. Find a way to focus on what is already working in your business and scale that and scale that. So for me, it's working one-on-one -on -one with my clients. So if I decided, oh, I don't want to do that anymore because I'm writing this book or, oh, I need to only go to group pro programs because this person said it's the only way to scale, that's kind of shooting myself in the foot because I know how to sell without being salesy or icky my one-on-one -on -one services that get, you know, amazing results to the right people. So that is starting to, you know, uh, let me rephrase that. It's, it's stopping myself from sabotaging myself saying I need to go and do this trend or now I need to create an online course about it or now I need to go totally passive income or whatever. No, you need to do the thing that's gotten easy for you because it probably took it a while for it to get easy. So I want you to focus on what's working and I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. But that is like my biggest wish and goal and hope for all of you is that you will focus on what's working and that you will take a step back to stop and look at what's already been working for you in your business or um, what's already feeling easy to you in your business where you've already made progress. And let's grow that rather than like finding ways to make ourselves wrong because we're not far enough along, right? Um, Sheila says, I know if you say, if you uh, feel like you need help to delegate, did you have trouble giving up control when you need to do that yourself? I'm so afraid to do this because I'm afraid I'm so particular on how things I make are done that I will just get frustrated. Yeah, totally. Oh my gosh, Sheila. I was like, you can ask Julie. You can ask the people who worked for me before Julie. Like, I was a terrible control freak delegator. <laughs> Honestly, the first time in my life that I ever just allowed myself to be supported was when Maeve died. Because I literally was like, I don't, I'm not brushing my hair. Like, I don't know. I, I, I forgot a hairbrush, you know, when we went to a camp out of my parents because we didn't want to be in our house, you know, and go home to an empty nursery. Like, I just didn't. Like, I just was like, ah. Uh. So people wanted to bring me food. And I was like, oh, that's why would they bring me food? Because I am, I'm not holding a baby. I'm capable of making my own food, right? Like, I should be able to cook meals. And I remember, I don't, I don't remember who it was, but someone Maybe my mom was like, Christine, just let people help for the love of Pete. They know there's nothing they can do. They want to do something. Let them bring you meals. And I was like, okay. So I said yes, just because I like kind of didn't know what else to do in that moment. But um, it was such a like life-giving thing for us because I didn't want to be cooking meals. You know, I needed to like grieve. And, you know, Garrett and I needed to like, support each other and we needed to let other people help us and obviously like that situation is really really different than um building a business in some ways although i have talked about how grief is like entrepreneurship <laughs> but i think i think sheila it starts with making a decision it starts with making a decision to delegate the stuff that you hate 
You know, like I'm not going to delegate coaching because I love it, obviously, right? I really enjoy writing unless I'm putting the pressure on myself that it's a book and it has to be perfect. Hello. So like, I really enjoy writing my content. I really enjoy interacting with you all. Like those are the things I don't delegate. So I'm sure there are things in your life that you don't enjoy that you could delegate first before like the thing that's like the most critical part of your business. And that's where I would look first. Um, Mallory says my plan for 2018 is to have my one assistant basically handling most of my MK director's tasks, my other assistant basically handling most of my horse client tasks so I can focus on the strategy parts of their business. Yes, strategy is so fun, right? I'm so excited for 2018. My word is joy. And I know that getting this in place will allow me to have more joy. Beautiful. And it's also going to allow you to create from a space of joy, right? What do I, what would be the most fun thing for me to create next? Not like I feel like I have to, or I'm already overwhelmed. So now I'm going to add something else to my plate. Like kidding, not kidding. Right? Love, love, love that. I love it so much. Okay. These are awesome questions. What other questions do you guys have? What other questions do you all have for me? We talk a little bit about the book if you want while I'm waiting for your questions. So um, this is, it's going to be a really fun time to be around Life with Passion, the Passionate and Profitable Entrepreneur Society, because we are gearing up for a book launch, ladies. And it's going to be so much fun. We're going to get this book to um, an Amazon bestseller, and um, we're developing a Kindle version as well as a paperback version. Um, I'm going to do like a mini book tour, mostly virtually, um, but a couple of places online or a couple of places in person. And, um, if you want, if you're interested in like getting the behind the scenes of, um, getting to see behind the scenes of a successful book launch, um, you know, getting to be a part of like putting this thing out there that has been um, in process for so long. Like, um, let me know, let me know because certainly like, um, I'm going to be inviting some of you to be a part of that. But I also just want you to know that like, if you're like, Oh my gosh, you know, I want to talk about how like this book about how to leave your nine to five and all of that. And I just love this. Like, let me know. And I'll make sure that, um, that, that you get on the list. Um, um, Mallory says, how do you continue to increase your costs? Um, and is there a good time frame to wait until you increase your costs again? Yeah, I mean, everyone's different, right? Like, there's no magic bullet or no magic, like, this is the way that you have to do it. Um, I think part of it is, like, when does it feel like it's time? When do I feel like I'm providing a, so much more value and support? When do I feel confident enough? Um, you know, there's a range in service-based business, or really in every business, there's a range of things, right? I mean, I could go buy something, I could go buy a painting on Etsy for $5 or $5,000, right? I could go buy a car for $500 um, or $500,000. Like, I think it's, there's a way in um, which, like, we're just so much in um, our heads about things that, we make up all these stories of why we can or can't do um, costs increase at a certain time. So I think that's the important thing to notice. Um, how did I increase my costs? The beginning of my business, I um, coached my first few clients for 50% off. And then I raised my price to what, um, you know, I had planned from the beginning as being full price. And then I raised my price again. And then, um, you know, once I had sold a bunch and I was like, oh my gosh, like these people are getting these amazing results. Like I felt super, super confident. I felt super, super clear. Um, and when I, I raised it again, and honestly, I haven't raised it. I mean, it's been well over a year. Like, my clients get a really good value. There are a lot of coaches out there who are charging, you know, 10, 20, whatever, thousand dollars and like have less experience than me, you know, and they don't have like a 70% quit rate or whatever, like helping women quit their jobs. I don't say that to brag. I just, I'm so confident that like, 
my package is a freaking good deal. And I really like that feeling, right? Like I just own that, like six months to work with me at this price. Like, and I haven't raised it. Like I just, I know what people need. I know how to show up. And that has come with a lot of practice. And that has come with a lot of inner work, right? Working on my own stuff, working with my own coaches that has come with a lot of experience. Like it wasn't always that way. But like, I'm super confident. And that also makes it easier to sell because I'm not scared of what someone's going to say when I say the price. I'm just like, man, I know what they're going to get for that. I know what they're going to get for that. I know how I'm going to show up for them. Like, I know it's a good deal, right? So that's what you're going for. You're going for that kind of like, that kind of feeling. Because then when you present it to them, it's just about like, look, this is the value. Remind them the value of what they're getting. Remind them what they get with you. They're so happy with you. It's hard to find someone good. Good help is hard to find. Like, it's really true. You know, I mean, I, um, I hired a VA once for like $35 an hour. Not, not anyone in here who was a, she was supposed to be amazing. Not. Right. But, um, Hey, there are a lot of different ways to increase your prices. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. And you got to be prepared to let people make their own decisions about that. Because people are going to come and go. As you raise your prices, you will get less of the people who chose you based on your price. And they will, you will get more people who are just like, oh my gosh, she's worth it. I will pay that for her. Which is why I think it's really important not to compete um, on price. Um, Mallory, you want to go to a book signing? Yay, thank you. Okay, come to a book signing. Um, Jackie says, I'm interested in the behind the scenes of your book launch. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, I'll add you to the list. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Yes, they. it's cold. It's kind of gray. They're totally stir crazy. Um, but yeah, they get to be with me, so it's fine. Um, awesome. You guys, these are great questions. Um, I want you to continue to ask your questions um, live or on the replay, and I will come back and answer them. I'm going to give you like another minute or so for any of the, those of you who are watching live if you have any more questions for me. Because here's the thing, like I know I was, um, Jackie said like, you make strategy sound so easy. Well, you know, I think like um, that's just kind of my, it's kind of my jam, right? It's kind of my zone of genius. That's why I love, it is my zone of genius. This is why I love being here with you guys. Like, this is why I do what I do. Because simple strategies and like helping you uncover your confidence, like that's what I'm really good at. But each of you have a thing or more that you are really good at. Do you know what that is? And are you focusing on that? And are you offering that? And are you selling that? And are you following up on that? Right? Or are you like hiding out and going, I don't know, like I'm scared to get visible. I'm scared to, you know, do this or that. What will people say? Like, that's all great information for you because now you know what to work on. Now you know what to get support around, right? With my book, it got to a point where I said, I literally said to, Ju to Julie, <laughs> I was like, I need one more set of eyes on this. After I worked on it for seven days straight, then the next thing, I literally by Sunday night, I had gone into this like place. I've, I've shared with you guys how it was like a, mind, a total mindset struggle. Like all my procrastination stuff came up, all my perfectionism stuff came up throughout the week. Like all the stuff, default stuff I used to do, like, you know, was, was coming back up that I used to do to procrastinate, um, was coming back up because this was like a whole new level for me. So then after I worked on it for a week straight, my eyes were crossing from the content. I was like, I might be saying the same thing in every chapter. I don't know. Like I would just had gotten too close to it. And so I said to Julie, like, I literally cannot tell if this is poop on a stick <laughs> or if it's really good. <laughs> like I had reached what one of my friends in school called the region of inefficiency. Like when we were studying uh, in university and you know you you could study enough to get whatever a 95 like but if you studied three more hours you might only get a 96 let's say or something that's the region of inefficiency like it's not efficient anymore so I had reached that point in my book and I knew I had to take a break from it but the other thing was 
that I also knew I had been, I had got, I've caught myself spinning my wheels and I knew I was ready to get this book out there. Like you guys know my goal was to get it done by the end of 2017, right? That didn't happen. Fine. It's the middle of January. I don't care. But like, um, I knew I need to show up in a big way, which is why I hired an editor and paid her a lot of money because guess what? She emailed me this morning going, where are the chapters? And I was like, oh, I'll have those over to you right away, right? Hello, that's the power of accountability. That's the power of support. I know I need her eyes on my book and give me specific feedback so that I know what to do next to finalize it, right? And so like, that's the power of getting support. So if you feel like you don't know where, uh, what's, how to even start to focus on what's working, how to delegate, how to get more customers, how to market message price, all of that stuff, that's where you look at getting support. That's where an intensive with me might be helpful. That's where if you want to talk about working together for six months, then, you know, we can talk about that February spot or a March spot or whatever. But like, I haven't even looked to see if I have anything opening up in March. But like, um, that's the thing to, to ask yourself is like, where am I getting the most confused? Where am I getting the most stuck? Go get yourself some, some support around that, like I did with the book, right? And I just share that with you because we all have those things. There's no like wrong or like you reach a certain point and like you don't need help anymore. It's just different stuff, right? When you're doing something that you've never done. You just want to learn from somebody who's done it, who can hold your hand and kick your butt, right? So we all have those things. And I want more than anything for you to be able to focus on what's working in 2018, to be able to take these things, to be able to simplify down the strategies and to be able to really, really see the progress and make the money that you want to make in your business and feel really good doing it. Like have a lot of fun doing it, right? That's the point. That's a life with passion. Thanks for joining me for this awesome Ask Me Anything live stream. It's been really, really fun to be with you all. If you have other questions, um, drop them in the, uh, the comments and I'll come back. All right. Have an awesome day. I'll talk to you soon.